Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 18 of Bumbling Through Birthright, which is the series where I talk about all the stupid things we do as we play through our Dungeons and Dragons campaign of Birthright. If you are not caught up, make sure you check out the link down below for the last episode and you can also watch the entire playlist. But basically, at the end of last session, we finally left the province of Sarkol and we headed to Levica, which is the location of the summer court for Steward Vinnick, and we had petitioners. At the end of the last video, I think I mentioned that there must not have been anything important with the petitioners because I didn't write anything down, but I think we just headed to the longhouse and there were petitioners and then we ended the session. So we started off this session with petitioners and the fun thing is we had all six player characters at the table, which means we had Roz, we had Rainier, we had Renolfer, we had Brindis, we had Jan, and we had Val. And anytime there's a lot of us, the petitioner situation kind of gets very interesting. So the first petitioners that showed up were mothers and chieftains, and they were all like, listen, can you please make peace with the Blood Skull Barony? If you remember from last session, we literally just made a foray into the Blood Skull Barony to save some druids. They're like, can you just, you know, sue for peace with them? Because we don't want to go back to war. We just had a war with the Bandit Kingdom. We don't want to lose our sons and our husbands and all that. And we decided, yes, we'll ask for peace, why not? Because, I mean, there's a good chance that they won't say yes to peace, but also, even if they do, when they eventually attack us, because they will, we can be like, well, you know, we tried, and now they're breaking the terms of this treaty, so, yeah, we, we need to... We need to fight them. So we're just kind of covering our back and we also set up a committee because we're like how do we even talk to these evil orogs? So we set up a committee and hopefully they'll figure out a way to communicate with the Blood Skull Barony so we can ask for peace. Next this guy shows up and he's got like one of those plague doctor masks and he's got like a long leather coat and his name's Nolan Torrell and he is like hey can I buy a case of Dwale from you guys? And we're like, uh, can you take off the mask? He's like, no, 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 it's for your own protection. And he was super sketchy and he super wanted to pay us very little for this case. And we were like, no. <laughs> and so I'm sure that'll come back to haunt us. Roz made sure to send out some ravens to kind of all the Oak and Grove temples nearby who have Dwale to be like, watch out for this guy and don't let him like just steal your Dwale or underpay you for it. But I'm sure he'll come back to haunt us later. Absolutely. Also, we get a delivery of the Stjord Vinnick Gazette, which is a newspaper that has been in the making for game time, I feel like a year, real lifetime, at least six months. These guys had come in, they had asked for investments for their paper, and we decided not to invest in them because, you know, media and state should be separate. But anyways, they finally came out with their first edition, and it covered the end of the war and also the royal wedding. So, like, that's pretty cool. After that, there were no more petitioners, so we head out around the city because we've got to stock up. During the wedding, and I think the gift giving, Rainier had been talking to, not the siren, but her guard, about Dantier Island. And so, we're here... Well, I mean, I guess we're here now, and then there's another country here, and then there's the Sirens territory right there, but just kind of south in the ocean is this place called Dantier Island, and the Siren kind of watches over it. It's not her territory, but she always makes sure that there's Marines there, just in case. And so Rainier has heard all about these unknown creatures, and being a hunter, he's like, we have to go. We need to go right now. We need to go to Dantier Island. I need to hunt these things. Who can I ask about hunting these things? So we need to hire a boat to get us there. Jan goes off to the docks while everybody else is resupplying, and he finds a boat that is willing to take us. The guy's like, you know what, I go there pretty regularly. This is how much money I want. Also, I will take those cases of whiskey that you offered. All will be well. So once we're provisioned, we all pile on the boat, and we head off for a week and a half travel by boat. And as usually happens, there are no encounters. So we get to Dantier Island with no problem. We come up to the port, it's basically a port city, like everything's either built out on stilts or built off the dock, and then there's a huge wall around it. And um, let's just say there were a lot of Jurassic Park jokes, there was a lot of humming of the Jurassic Park music, because we just assumed it was dinosaurs. This is 
This is what we've thought the whole time, is it's probably dinosaurs. So we talked to our captain and he says, you know, Molly's place is probably the place you want to go. There's not really many places around here. There's one store and then off somewhere on the island, there's Dr. Lancaster's compound. And Roz, who's been around quite a bit, was like, hey, I think that name rings a bell. And she remembers back when she was in, I believe it was Anurian City, and he was exiled from there because he was like cutting people up and stuff, which is not good. He said it was for science, but hmm, hmm. But we head to Molly's place, and when we get there, there's a couple of people hanging out, and then there's this guy, he looks like he knows what he's doing, so we go up to him, and he says, hey, my name's Brunwald, I'm here to study the flora and fauna, but specifically the fauna of this island. He's like, the problem is, I've been here for a while, and nobody is willing to take me out beyond the gate. And we're basically like, yeah, sure, we'll take you, whatever. Because, I mean, we're going out anyway, and if he's willing to pay us for an expedition, why not get some money? So we agree on a price, and we figure we'll probably go the next day. We also hear rumors in the town about this druid named Amber, who had gone out beyond the gate a couple months ago, never came back, so everybody just assumes she's dead, because that's what happens to most people when they go beyond these gates. So in the morning, we walk up to the gate, and the guys that are manning the gates are like, sure, we'll let you out, but just so you know, when you're coming back, make sure nothing's following you. And if there's something following you, we're not gonna open the gate. So we're like, yeah, 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 okay. So we head out and there's basically like a long field. We figure that they probably go out and like slash and burn all the time to keep the jungle away from being like directly at the wall. And then we go into the jungle and it is a thick and it is a dense jungle. And so we go on, Rainier's marking our path as we're going. But in good news, Val's favored terrain is forest and in fifth edition, forest and jungle kind of go hand in hand. So we're actually in pretty good shape. That night, we're chilling, we're sleeping, and all of a sudden there's something all around us. And they are velociraptors. Dinosaurs, we were right. So there's 10 velociraptors, and there are six of us plus our little squishy friend, and I mean little squishy wizard too. And they start attacking. Three of them go for Brindis right away, and three of them go for Roz. Like they just assume weakest people. So fortunately, Val and Jan jump on the ones by Roz and kind of take them out. Brindis is able to put in a fair amount of damage into hers. Rainier comes out and is just like, this is great, and is killing ones. And then Jan uses this really cool blood ability that he has that he can either charm creatures or people or intimidate them. So he manages to intimidate four of the Velociraptors into just running away, which is great. And then Brindis puts the three by her to sleep, and then we kill them, so it's great. And then we're like, hey doctor, that's one. A couple days later, we come across some humanoid prints, and we're like, hmm, maybe we should follow these, but then it's nighttime, so we go to sleep, and on third watch, which is the watch of Val and Roz, they hear some noises in the distance. They kind of sound almost humanoid, and so Val throws a rock, and they go like dead silent. And so we wait them out, and they're trying to wait us out, and eventually they move after like forever, and they just walk off somewhere. So that seemed kind of weird. In the morning, we tell our friends about it, and then we decide, you know what, let's go see if we can track them. So we go in the direction of those prints from whoever we found last night, and they're also kind of humanoid. As we're going along, we finally catch up to them. We see like four figures in the distance, and so Jan says, wait here, I'm gonna stealth up on them and see what I can see. Well, he goes up and he gets super close, and then he sees them, and he is terrified. They're like half human, half lizard creatures, and he is so scared that he runs away, and he just full-blown runs back to where we are, terrified. And then by the time we calm him down and we get to where these creatures were, they're gone. He's not gonna follow these creatures. None of us have seen them, so we're like, are you sure, Jan? But we decide, let's continue on trying to find Dr. Lancaster's compound and any other creatures we can find for this buddy that we've got with us. And then maybe he knows something about these creatures we just saw. So we get up to the compound and it's pretty much nighttime and we knock on the door and this huge creature answers the door. He's pretty humanoid, but almost not quite. He's like eight feet tall. He says his name is Millar and we're like, hey, can we come in? We want to see the doctor. And he like just opens the door and lets us in. And he's like, listen, the doctor's indisposed, but you're welcome to stay here tonight. You can talk to him in the morning. Jan is obviously on edge still because he was like, those things were terrifying. And Roz, knowing what she knows about the doctor, is like, listen, we better be careful. We better make sure that we set a watch and lock our door. 
Val, however, wants to go out exploring, so she goes and she wanders around the compound for a while until she comes across this door, and this door looks like it's locked, but it's got cages on either side, and there's just, like, blood that's all over the place. So she's like, you know what, I want to go back inside. So she gets back inside, and then almost immediately this, like, blood-wrenching scream breaks out and it's like so loud that there's no way we're gonna be able to sleep so it's decided that we're all going to just you know go outside the compound sleep there for the night come back in the morning confront the doctor and see what's going on so we do that we set up camp and in the middle of the night Jan who has not slept because he's terrified hears something and Rainier hears it too and they like light a torch and it's one of those creatures and when Rainier sees it he freaks out and he runs. He just starts running. But Jan, you know, he's seen it before. He's kind of dug himself in. He is ready for this, so he holds his ground. But the creature starts to run after Rainier. And so Jan manages to, like, pull back on his crossbow. I think he got a crit and he just kills this creature. But, I mean, Rainier just keeps running because he's just going to run for, like, a minute. And he gets to, like, the shore. And he comes across all these other creatures that are, like, sleeping on the shore. And he's like, ah! And so he runs back and eventually he comes back to us and Jan by this point has grabbed this creature and he's showing everyone else he's woken us up he's like look the, this is the creature some of us sleep for the rest of the night some of us like Jan and Rainier don't because they're so terrified but in the morning we head back to the compound we knock on the door again and Malar is like what are weren't you inside okay whatever he's like you know I'm just getting breakfast for the doctor you're free to come over and chat with him. So we go over and Val was carrying this creature and she just like throws it on his table and he's like, why did you kill the beast man? He's like, they aren't violent. And we're like, well, you know, he was attacking our friend here. And it was like, what, did he actually attack him or was he just running in the same direction? I don't know. Anyway, um, we talked to the doctor. He tells us all about his experiments and how he's basically taking velocal raptors and turning them into humanoid creatures and how they have their own society and their own village and they're just living their life. And they don't attack people. They're all good. Except this one was kind of feral, so they're probably going to attack people. So we just decide to kill the doctor because if he's not there to make them anymore, they won't spread, they probably can't reproduce, we don't know for sure, but they probably can't, and so this will be fine. So Jan shoots him in the head with an arrow, he dies super fast because he's very squishy. Millar's not so happy with that though, and he just starts to go ape, like literally because he's part gorilla on all of us. We kill Millar, I mean there were six of us so it's pretty easy, Roz didn't even get a chance to go. This is like the second fight in a row that Roz did not get a chance to go. We decide let's head back to the city now because Brunswald is like, let's get me out of here. I'm sure we'll find the other creatures I want to see on the way back. And so we start to head back. Late that night while Jan is on watch with Rainier, they look up, they hear something, and there's some giant snakes above us, but Rainier has this blood ability where he can communicate with snakes and so he just kind of like, well not so much communicate, I think it's just like empathetic connection and so he's like oh they're just hungry so he feeds them and they are totally chill as we're making our way back to the walled city we're still looking out to see if maybe we can come across this druid amber that we know is missing maybe she's still alive checking for prince well Val does an amazing job on a survival check and she finds prince so we're about a day out from the city now but we're like we can't pass this up I know we want to bring this guy back but if we're like this close to her, we should try to go find her. So we go and we come across her and she is in this clearing and there are trees just knocked down everywhere. And she is like crazy. She's laughing. She's absolutely insane. And she's like, ha ha ha, too bad you guys. Look how strong I am. And just like pushes over a tree with her bare hand. And so that's like a little weird. And then she turns into a triceratops because she is a wild shaping and she just comes and she runs straight at Val and knocks her down and tramples her. It's very nice of her. This was one of those really sketchy situations where everybody could have died, especially Val, because she was so hurting. But fortunately, Roz has thunder steps, so she just like grabbed Val and transported them far away, damaged the Triceratops a bit, but it was people like Rainier and Renolfer and Jan and Brindis actually, who finally did in this Triceratops. We're like, no, there's no saving her, so, so just kill this crazy dinosaur druid. So we're hurting a little bit at that point, but we decide, you know, Let's just quickly heal up with potions and other various things and let's head back. We are so close to the city. So once we're healed as best we can, we start to head back to the city. And as we come out at the edge of the jungle, the people on the wall are yelling, no, 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 go back, go back, go back. And then behind us, bursting out from the jungle, 
is a T-Rex. I mean, there's a pretty good chance that the T-Rex heard the thunder step sound because that's really loud and came to investigate. So oops, sorry guys. So basically at this point we're faced with two options, kill the T-Rex or run into the jungle and hope we can hide. Obviously, we're gonna try to kill the T-Rex because we want to go to the city, not back into the jungle. Well, if we thought the crazy druid Triceratops was bad, a T-Rex is like a little bit worse. Again, it like tramples right into our midst. It tries to bite down on Brindis and eat her, but fortunately she has this cool ability where when she takes damage she can teleport like 60 feet away, so it looks like she got eaten, but she's just pieced out. So with its next turn, it's like, I'm gonna eat Yawn. So the T-Rex tries to eat Yawn and gets Yawn in its teeth. Ugh. Roz then grabs Renalfer and thunder steps the heck away from there because there was no point taking Val or Rainier away because they just want to be in the action and attacking this T-Rex. But you know, I figured it better spread out the party a bit because otherwise we're just all gonna get annihilated. The problem is we're putting quite a bit of damage in this T-Rex, but on the next turn it decides to swallow Yawn. Well, Bye, Yon. It was nice knowing you, but not quite. Yon has a con modifier of three, which means we have three rounds. Obviously, we don't know in, like, in-game, but we have three rounds to get him out before he's just gone forever. Fortunately, that was all we needed, and Roz managed to use Lightning Bolt to literally, like, just take off the T-Rex's head, and then, you know, Yon's head popped out. He's like, hey, guys, what's up? And then we were able to get back into the city, which was great. Everybody on the gate was like, holy crap, that's amazing what you just did. And we were like, yeah, like, you should probably deal with that body before other things come to eat it. And that was the end of that session. All told, we ended up coming across five creatures for Brunwald, so he had to pay us, I think, 450 gold, something like that. So not bad for a couple days' work and, like, almost dying a couple times. But it was good. So now we are back in the city. We found Amber. She did. We found Dr. Lancaster. He did. And then there's, I believe, a pirate king that we might go search for next time, or we might just head back to Holling Holman. It was kind of undecided at the end of the session. If you did enjoy this recap, make sure that you hit the like button down below, and also subscribe so you'll know when the next one comes out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.